church. Oh. <laughs> good morning. It's a beautiful day. God is good. Amen. God is good every day. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter our circumstances. It doesn't matter, you know, if we're having a great day or a bad day. He's still good. Amen. He's good when we're blessed and he's good when we're going through the storms. He's always good. Would you stand with us this morning? We're going to go right into some worship. We're so excited to worship with you this morning. We're so excited that we were able to come. Would you just turn real quick to someone next to you and just tell them something that God has been good to you about? Come on. Maybe you have children. Maybe you have uh, a dog. Maybe you have family. Uh, maybe you got food. Maybe you got clothes. I hope you got clothes. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You're healthy. You're here. Amen. Well, as we go into worship, I just want you, you know, just everyone, if you just close your eyes and just remember how good God has been to you. Sometimes it's really important to just remember where God has brought you from. Amen. Thank you, God. God, you're so good. See, we're not going to worship dictated by what's going on around us. We're going to worship dictated by who he is, and he is good. Amen. God, we love you. We're so glad to be here in your presence today, God. I pray that you would shower down goodness and joy over us. You're such a good father. We're really excited to worship you. And uh, we just give our hearts and praises to you. In your name I pray. Amen. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the way The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I will Lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy, oh, my day. Oh, yes, I I count on one thing, the same God never fails, will not fail me now, you won't fail me now, in the waiting, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, he's working all things
Jesus. Come on, just let that come from your heart right now. Raise it up. Raise a continually challenged with this question and the father always challenged I don't, I don't know about you but he he challenges me all the time when I'm when I'm alone with him when I'm in his word I'm always challenged and challenged to grow and challenged to do better and challenged to be better and that's what my relationship with the Holy Spirit looks like he's continually pushing me towards the vision and towards what he has for me and the question he often asks me when I have doubt and unbelief is do you believe do you believe? And it's a very simple question, and it's a question that in my heart I always want to just scream, yes, I believe, of course I believe. I'm a pastor. I even get paid to believe. <laughs> that was a joke, but <laughs> is that the problem? As I'm worshiping and as I'm asking the Lord, God, where are you? What are you doing? Are you really good? He's asking me, well, what do you believe? 
You see, my belief doesn't deter- isn't determined by my circumstances and my situation. My belief is determined by what he's done in me and what I can remember of what he is and who he is. And when I know what he's done, I know what he'll do. And it doesn't matter, like Corey shared this morning in our prayer time, it doesn't matter if you're in the pig pen or it doesn't matter if you're in the palace. He's good. And even like Corey shared, Corey shared in our prayer time, he said, you know, even there was, a, there was a revelation that the prodigal son had when he was in that pig pen. And the one revelation was, my God is good. The question becomes, do you believe that he's good? Because if you believe that, he, that he's good, your attitude changes, your heart changes, your vision changes, your perspective changes, your circumstances change because of the way that you perceive and the way you respond to them. So my question this morning for you is, do you believe? Do you believe he's good? Because if you believe that he's good, then your response should mirror that belief. How many of you in this place, you've got circumstances, situations, maybe a sickness, maybe something you're going through? But here's the deal. I believe that when two or three gathered, he's in their midst. And where his presence is, there is fullness of joy. And today, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're walking through, I don't know if you've been going it through all year long or whether this is something new. I believe today that God can come in in one instant with his goodness and change what's going on in your heart and in your life. Anybody else believe that? All right, so right now, if you're going through something, if you're going through some sort of situation or circumstance or or sickness or disease, I, I just want you to raise your hand. And there's people in this place who believe who they actually believe that God is good and that he wants to move because you're his child and he absolutely loves you. So if you're going through something, come on, don't be ashamed, don't be shy. We're all going through something at some point. Raise your hand. And now I want those of you who believe that God is who he says he is and he's about to do what he says he'll do, I want you to move right now. And I want you to begin to pray for those people around you. I want you to begin to release the goodness and the love of God right where they're at. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just release right now your goodness. Father, I pray for those situations and circumstances that are going on in people's life. Father, I pray right now that sickness must bow its knee at the name of Jesus. That the price that he paid was enough. Come on, right now, right where you're at, just begin to pray for that person that you're standing next to. Just begin to agree with them. Begin to believe that God is who he says he is. He is good. That even in the pig pen, he's good. That no matter where he is, he's good. No matter where you are, he's still good. Come on, we lift this up. We lift this up right now. We believe, Father. Therefore, we move. We're moved like the shepherds. We're moved to go do something, to go be something. God, we're moved. begin to worship him. If you're going through a situation, just begin to raise this up in faith that God is who he says he is and he'll move like he says he does.
Does anyone have a testimony of how good God has been? Can you look at your life and say, man, God, you've been good. If 
Father God, I thank you for your goodness and for your love. Father, I thank you that the word tells us that you never leave us, you never forsake us. God, it also says that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. I'm going to do something just a little bit different right now that we normally don't do. But how do you know we can do things different on snow days? Like snow days, all things are out the window. Mel, would you come up here real quick? And Chad, will you come up here? Susan, will you come up here? I want you to tell, tell us one testimony from 2019, short, sweet, something good that God has done in you that will build our faith. Okay? I want to tell you of this extravagant love of God, how he would go out of his way to touch one person. Steve and I went to South Africa, and while we were there, uh, before we left, God told me, you're going to South Africa too. And I said, God, no, 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 I don't want to buy the ticket, no. He says, go, I have an assignment for you. So we went to South Africa, and we were there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I go, baby. I don't know why God called me here, but hey, let's go sit out by the pool. We went out by the pool. This big, gigantic guy comes out like a sumo wrestler, and he jumps into the water and swims as fast as he can, and then he gets up and stands right in front of us. We're just looking at him. He's looking at us. He goes, my dad's dying, and I can't be there, and my phone won't work, and I can't tell him what I want to say, and I haven't talked to him in 20 years, and I need to call him. And he starts weeping, standing in front of us. And I'm looking at Steve, he's looking at me, and I'm going, do something. <laughs> and Steve goes, do you believe in prayer? And he goes, yes, I do. And he was from Australia. And so we got up, and he bear hugged us, one arm around Steve's neck and one arm around my neck. And he pushes us in himself, and he's going like this, crying. And we're praying. And there's crowds all around the pool. Everybody in the restaurants, everybody's seeing us. And then God tells Steve, sing over him. And he goes, okay. And so Steve is singing, pressed into his stomach, going, it is well with my soul. <laughs> and then we got a word of knowledge. He said, your dad is still alive. Go back into your room and call him now. You're going to get through. And the guy gets up and he takes his stuff and he leaves. I looked at Steve and I go, wow, that was, that was an assignment. Another guy walks right up to us and stands right there in front of us. We're like, okay. He goes, I saw what you did to that last guy. He's been crying in his room all day long. He goes, I don't have a dad. And my mom died when I was seven, but I believe in prayer. And I looked at Steve and I was like, do something. And Steve goes, do you need a daddy love, a daddy prayer, and a daddy hug? He goes, yes, I do. And he just starts weeping. I told Steve, and then he left. I told Steve, what is it? We got a sign over that says, open for business. The next morning, the guy comes in, and he's happy, and he goes, I talked to my dad last night. I told him everything. I told him I'm so sorry for the way I've treated him. And he died at 4 o'clock this morning. And it is well with my soul. And I said, God loved you so much that he took a man from Australia to South Africa and a woman and a pastor from America to South Africa to have an encounter. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares. That's how good our daddy is. Come on. Does that make you feel? That feels good, right? Susan, come on up here. Susan, can you tell me anything that God has been good with in your life this year? Well, I was, uh, during worship, the Lord gave me a word and I said, God, if Jay calls me up there, I'll share it. Then I thought, but Jay d never does that. So I thought I had an out. But I was reminded of a scene from one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And it was the Battle of Helm's Deep. And in that scene, the good guys are being overrun by the bad guys. And they're outnumbered 10 to 1. And, and the Urukai and the orcs that are coming against them are some of the most demonic looking creatures you could ever imagine. And in this scene, this little 13-year-old boy who has never been seasoned in battle is scared out of his ever-loving mind. And uh, Aragorn, who is a seasoned warrior, is looking at him. And the little boy looks at Aragorn and comes over. Aragorn motions for him to come over. And the little boy says, the men 
has said we won't make it through the night. And he's talking about the seasoned men, the men who have been in battle, who have fought everything under the sun. And he's saying, they're saying, we're not going to make it through the night. And Aragorn says something to him that is one of the most profound statements in a movie I've ever heard. He said, there is always hope. And I just feel today that there's somebody here that you need to know that there's always hope. And how that scene ends, what those, those grown men and that 13-year-old boy didn't realize is that when the sun came up, that a whole army of reinforcements were be, being sent in to war on their behalf. And they ended up winning that battle. And the Lord wants you to know that there are reinforcements coming to your aid right now. And that you need to worship him knowing that that is true and that there is always hope for you. Your circumstances are not beyond his ability to overcome. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if it's a broken marriage. I don't care what it is. Reinforcements are on their way. So have hope. Come on. All right. Can you do one more? All right, here we go. It hasn't just been a blessing for 2019. I, I think it started a few years back, and it's just been a roller coaster. It's uh, it's just like Jay said. Do you believe? It's it's been a season of believe for us, and I think a lot of us we go through these roller coasters to where you just kind of lose that that faith. You lose your believing spirit, you know. And and the Lord really put that on my heart. Do you really believe? Do you really believe? And just reading through the Gospels. You know, the people that traveled with Jesus, they, they had a hard time believing. They, they seen it firsthand, you know, and that was like, wow, I think we got it pretty hard. You know, these guys rolled with Jesus, and they still didn't believe, you know, even after he told them over and over, I'm going to die. I'm going to come back after three days, so be waiting for me. Be ready, you know, and they still didn't believe. Nobody was waiting, and I think, gosh, that's so crazy. You know, these guys that were with him didn't even believe it, and so it's just been in my heart to believe, you know, we, we go through trials, we go through everything, and that's been our life this last few years, and, and just not my life, but my family's life. The Lord put something in my heart of who I'm going to be and shout out bigger dreams so I have bigger things to reach for. And through that, it's just been this crazy trials of everything that we go through, through our family, and just getting in unity, and just breaking off bondages, things that, that we thought were impossible to break off, things that he, he pressed us into to shoot toward getting us to our goal, to the bigger vision, you know, so that's been more of a testimony for us for 2019 is pushing deeper, digging deeper, getting in there, and just going for what you believe is true, you know, so believing that you have a bigger destiny than what is right now, bigger than this trial that you're in right now, so I just, yeah, I go with that, with believe, believe it, 2020, press forward. Nice. And you have a young lady who is in your family who is taking a huge step of faith in her life. And uh, we want to bless her today. Allie, would you come up here? And Jess, you can come up with them. Allie is leaving for YWAM. Uh, she has felt a call of God on her life, and we support her 10 million percent, if that's even possible. Um, just to see the work that God has done in you and your family has been an amazing journey. Stop crying. You're going to make me cry. I'm not I'm a bit of a crier. Um, but we love you very much, and we, want not, we don't want you just to go. We want you to be sent, and we want you to go with our blessing and with all of our love and support and anything that we can do. Um, we want um, to be there for you. And so um, I'm going to pray for Allie, if that's all right. And here at Abundant Life, we just believe the outstretched hand means I don't, I don't hold anything back. Like, I want to bless you as well. And uh, we just love you so much. So I'm going to pray for you, Allie. Father God, I thank you for this family, Lord God, and I thank you for the heart that you placed in Allie, God. I thank you um, that she is, she's very pure of heart, God, and she's sincere, and she's kind, and she's loving. And Father, I just pray for increase in the anointing um, that you've placed over her. Father, I pray for um, every step to be ordered. Father, for doors to be opened. Father, for um, understanding to come and clarity to come in the revelation that you've already given her, Father. God, we send her from this place with great joy, knowing that you have a plan for her life. And, Father, it is an honor to be a part of, of this family and of Allie's life, God. We love you and praise you. And we ask that you would protect her and protect the hearts of these parents as they send their daughter. Lord God, um, encourage them. 
keep sending encouragement, Father, and for friends, new friends that will help her along the path that you've called her to. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. 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 Do this for me. Before you sit down, would you just find one person next to you and just bless them right now. Just tell them, look at them and say, hey, God is really, really good. Before you find your seat, find one person. Good morning, Abundant Life. I'm Dalton, and these are your Sunday morning announcements. Hey, 2019 is almost over, so if you need to get anything in for the end of the year statements, our cutoff is December 31st. Hey, if you're an Echo youth, then you know that January 3rd through the 4th, we are going to be having a lock-in here at the church. From middle school to high school, you're all invited. We can't wait to see you guys there. Hey, guys, our next sermon series is going to be called Roots, and it's going to start January 12th. Hey, Shout Wednesdays are going to be back January 15th. Can't wait to see you guys all there. Hey, Abundant Life family, if you're a member of our church, our business meeting is going to be February 2nd. It's going to be a great time. Hey, that's all your announcements. It is December 29th. Please prepare your tithes and offerings. You guys have a great day. See you later. Oh, hey, if you're Abundant oh, Life family on. member, then you know our business meeting is going to be no, you don't. You don't know. I'm informing you. Can everybody just go, hey, real quick. Hey. Hey. We love you, Dalton. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Thank you so much for braving the snow and coming out to see us. Um, do we have any people here that this is your first time here? Because if you are, I want to give you a big round of applause that braving you for for you braving this coming out here on your first day is there anybody here new today I don't want to embarrass you I just want to give you something for free oh we do will it is your first time here today okay so today you're our guest and tomorrow your family so before you leave today we do have a small welcome to the family gift that we want to give back to you there's Dalton Mr. Hay family himself right back there go visit him after service today I do want to reiterate we do have our Youth Convention Conference lock-in here on January 3rd and 4th here at 6 p.m. And I think it's $30 per student, so it'll be fun. Bring your kiddos. Uh, can you guys prepare your tithes and offerings? But first, um, I just want to say we're a pretty small group this morning. And uh, when a part of our family is missing, we feel it, right? So I want you to turn around and look at the camera, everybody. See that little camera up there? I want you to wave and tell everybody that's watching on live stream, we miss you. We're glad you stayed safe, but we do miss you. But um, we are going to still give you the opportunity to give your tithes and offerings. So you can go to our website or our app, and you'll be able to give online there for you, for those of you watching online. Okay. Um, please stand with me while... We pray over our tithes and offerings. Um, after I pray, please stay standing so you can help me welcome Pastor Jay as he comes to speak today. So please take your tithes and offerings in your hand. Father God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to give you our first fruits. 
to honor you with our first fruits. Thank you for letting us contribute to taking care of our part of the family and doing our part. And thank you for allowing us to have some ownership of taking care of our family through that. Your generosity and your faithfulness is such a good example to us. And we just want to thank you so much for being such a good father. So please bless these tithes and offerings as we give them to you today. In your name we pray. Amen. Please pass the buckets and please help me welcome Pastor Jay as he brings the word today. Hey, hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. We just want to say thank you guys for, you know, we keep saying brave in it, but really this storm wasn't that bad. Really? Right? We're from Nebraska. Listen, I'm sure somebody's wearing shorts somewhere in Nebraska today. Shorts and sandals scooping their driveway. Hey, so as we were praying for today, um, it, my daughter, Sophia, uh, many of you know that we, uh, we go through glasses like crazy, eyeglasses with her. Because she either loses them or takes them off or she forgets where they are and then we're cleaning her room. And it, it never fails. Like the moment we buy new glasses, we find her old ones. Has it ever happened to anyone else that they think, you're like, I can't find these, I can't find these. I'm just going to go get a new one. You come home, you're like, oh, they're in this drawer that I've opened 473 times. Like they've been here the whole time. Well, this time was a little different. We're always dealing with it, but uh, my, wife, uh, my wife had some extra money in one of the accounts, their health savings account, and so we're like, okay, let's just buy Sophia some new glasses, and let's just get it over with. Bite the bullet, let's do it. So we went, uh, we went this week, and uh, we got her some new glasses, and then we went and picked them up um, yesterday, and the whole day, she's like, she loves her new glasses because she's a little fashionista girl. Um, they're clear, and they're like super visco, or whatever the kids are saying these days, um, but so she's, she's wearing them, and she's just complaining all day. I'm like, honey, you just got to get used to them again. You haven't worn your glasses for a few months. It'll be all right. You just got to get used to them. And she keeps going like this and looking over the top of them. Like, stop doing that. You got to do this and look clearly. So I kept cleaning them and doing this. And finally, I'm like, just give me your glasses. And I looked at them. They weren't clean. And I looked through them, and um, I kind of, my, my daughter and I prescription aren't too far off. And I looked through them, and everything was just completely blurry. Like, I couldn't see anything out of them. And this is a true story. This is crazy because I'm talking, what I'm talking, this goes right along with what I'm talking about today and over the next two weeks. And I'm like, babe, have you really not been able to see all day? And she's like, no, I haven't been able to see all day. I'm like, we took her to Sam's Club. We took her to Walmart. She's out running into things. And I'm like, come on, girl. Like, give her the program. But she honestly couldn't see because her lenses were wrong. And so tomorrow we're taking them back in. We're going to get the right lenses, the right prescription put in. And uh, it's crazy, it's crazy that in life, when you have the wrong lenses, you tend to end up in the wrong places. When you're not seeing life with the right lenses, you, you aren't going to get where God is calling you to be. And that's what vision's all about. It's amazing to me. We're starting, uh, we're starting 2020. 2020 represents perfect vision. And I understand that, I, I honestly believe there's a prophetic word going across our nation right now that God's bringing revelation and he's bringing renewed vision and clarity of vision, even to, the, even to visions of past that are saying, God, I know your promises and I haven't seen them come to pass. God's renewing that vision and he's restoring that vision and he's replacing some lenses for some of you. And we're going to learn through the next two weeks how we can see what God has called us to in the right, in the right way. Because how many of you know you cannot get where you want to go unless you're seeing it the right way? Amen? You need the right lenses. Every single one of us are called to this, to have a vision, to understand this is what I'm called to, this is what I'm called for. And honestly, so many people walk through life and they never have a full understanding of what you are supposed to do. How many of you are walking through that season or have walked through a season where you're like, I have no clue what this is. I have no clue what this is. I have no clue where I'm going. I'm trying to figure this out. We, you know, I, I did uh, youth ministry forever and and that's the whole, you know, adolescence age. They're trying just to figure out who they are, not necessarily even where they're going, but trying to figure out who they are. And if you never figure that out, if you never get proper vision and you never have focus of where God's taking you, I promise you that you're going to wander and you're going to falter and you're going to be frustrated and disappointed in so many different areas in so many different ways. But how many of you know if God tells you something, he's also prepared you and prepared to give you the way to fulfill what he's called you to. 
So it's so important to understand, okay, God doesn't just give me vision, but he's preparing me for the completion of his promise. And so every single person, what are we, we have to ask ourselves, what are we living for? What is the vision? What is the focus? Because vision is the essence of why we live our lives and why we do what we do. The reason you are sent into the world by God is for you to fulfill a purpose and a destiny. I said this, I say this all the time. If you have breath in your lungs, you have a destiny over your life. Anybody not have breath in their lungs today, we will pray for you because God is good. Anybody walk outside this morning and the breath was gone for just a second. You're like, oh, yep, this is real. <laughs> so it becomes, how do we have these lenses? How do we have the lenses that God has called us to? Because I understand that if we can see it, if we can see what God is saying, we can have it because it's his promise fulfilled in our lives. He doesn't call us to anything that he's not willing to fulfill. That's what revelation is. He doesn't show us things in our lives. He doesn't show us doors, and he doesn't open things for our lives in order for us to fail. How many of you know God has not called you to fail? So what is this vision? What, what do you need to have in order to see things clearly and properly and, and step into this? Vision is a discovery of God's plan as it relates to your life. There are two different kinds of visions. There's personal vision and there's corporate vision. There's personal vision and there's corporate vision. And oftentimes we get so caught up in the group aspect of a corporate vision that we forget that God has something for you to do. And we're going to talk about a little bit about this today. But there's a, there's a vision that God has given us for 2020 for Abundant Life. And we're excited about it. And we're going to share that with you. And then next week I'm going to go really deep into what that looks like and how we're going to attain those things. But today I want to talk more about what has God called you to. Everybody put your thumb up. Just, you can do one or two, whatever you want to do. Do like this. Say, I got a vision. That was pretty corny. But at least I know you're awake. You have a vision. God has given you something, even though if you don't even know it yet, God is preparing you and he wants to show you what he has for you because God has a personal vision for you. Vision is, is foresight, understanding what's coming with insight, understanding who God has created you to be. Vision is, 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 beginning, is beginning something with the end in mind. I don't know if you knew, how many of you, anybody in here ever run a race? Maybe you were in high school, maybe you, maybe you did a 5K, or maybe you did a 3.3K, whatever that is. No, what is that? You've done something in life. How many of you have ever done anything in life? Good. When you start something, you don't start something in order to start. You start something in order to see where you finish, how you can finish, how you can attain, how you can. You have to have a goal in mind. When the marathoner starts the run, they're thinking, okay, I have to make it to mile. How many miles is that? 26? Whatever it is. That's all too many miles to run. Just buy a bike. You'll get there faster. <laughs> Sorry. My wife loves to run, and she'll, uh, well, how'd, how'd you run go? Good, I ran seven-minute miles today. I'm like, don't know what that means, but you're happy, so I love you. Good job, babe. Because there's a goal. There's, there's, a, there's a plan at the end, and the vision is the end goal. And we always want to start something. We want to start 2020. I want you to start something new in your life, understanding that you have a goal to attain and you have purposes in your life and a destiny that God wants you to achieve. There's short-term goals. There's long-term goals. And the goal of every Christian should not be to get to heaven. Listen to me. I want you to go to heaven. I love heaven. I want you to be saved. I want you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But God's vision and destiny for your life is not just to be saved. It is to live right now today, releasing the kingdom of God, being a son and daughter, believing that he is who he says he is, and impacting the world around you. It's this amazing testimony that we see throughout scripture. You see, I understand that there's not a lot of people even in scripture that saw great things happen in their life without first seeing the vision. Jonah, he got the word. And then he went through this amazing journey, some good, some bad, some self-inflicted wounds along the way. But he went through this amazing journey and he saw an entire city come to revival. Why? Because he first had the word. You see, vision is birthed within the spirit of God first and released to man through revelation of his Holy Spirit. 
it's birthed in the spirit. It's conceived with the mind. We get understanding and, and we begin to think the process out. Oftentimes we think that, okay, if God just wants to do something, he's just going to do it. Yeah, he wants to use you, though. He wants to use your mind. He wants to use the gifts and talents and abilities that he's given you. And it's achieved with action. I get so frustrated sometimes when I hear people talk about, well, God promised me this. God promised me this. I said, that is awesome. I absolutely believe in that promise. What are you doing right now today to achieve it? You see, we believe this destiny is something that we one day achieve, but I've told people all the time, anytime I talk to them about their destiny, I say, destiny is not something you achieve someday. It is what you do today. What are you doing today physically in your prayer time, in your worship? In your reading, what are you doing today that's going to push you to achieve the goals that God has for you? You see, no matter what it is in life, if you want to be an athlete, if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be in ministry, no matter what it is, you have to start the process today. And in 2020, and, and, and as we turn the calendar year, it is so, it's such an easy time to say, okay, I'm going to start doing something now. I'm going to start creating some habits now that are going to take me to the place that I want to be. There's a quote that I love, it says, to have sight without having vision is worse than being blind. I'm going to say that again. To have sight without vision is worse than being blind. If you can, if you, just to see the things around you but not understand and not have a place to go in a direction, it is worse than being blind. Vision is not the same as ambition. And while am, ambition is what a man desires to become in life, vision is what God created him to become. So how do I get vision? How do I, yeah, and maybe you're, you're sitting there today and you're like, okay, that's great. I've never heard about vision. I've never had a goal. I've never had a destiny. I've never understood this. How do I get it? How many of you want to know how to get it today? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. The first thing you must do in order to receive the vision that God has for your life is you have to stand upon your watch. You must separate yourself from the crowd. Listen, you are not called to be normal. Somebody say Amen. Some of you are doing a really good job already. Some of you need some work. That's all right. You are not called to be normal. He created you so different and so diverse. And all of our lives were taught, no, you need to fit in. You need to get in with the crowd. You need to, you know, just go along. Listen, Christianity is called to be a counterculture. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to believe in the power of prayer. You're supposed to see people healed. You're still supposed, to, supposed to see people transformed by the power of his love and his goodness. You aren't supposed to believe the same things that the world believes. You're supposed to look different. So your destiny must look different as well. Your vision must look definite. Well, you are not common. So your vision as well is supposed to not be common. We can't look at what our friends are doing or what society tells us to do and feel like we just need to do the same thing in order to succeed and to order to be to be so, uh, uh, you know, relatable to the world that they'll come to us. You know, the world doesn't want something that they already have because they know what they have isn't working for them. It's like Caleb and Joshua who refused in Numbers chapter 13. They refused to go along with the report of the other spies who were, who were reporting out of fear. They said, no. We know that we're called. We know we're set apart. We know that God has promises are good. We've seen what he said. We heard what he said, and we've seen the promise in the physical form. Now all we have to do is trust him and go get it. Our vision has to be different than the vision of the world, than the vision of your friends. You know, I, I know, F Allie, you may be going through this right now where some of your friends are like, well, you're not going to college? I mean, what are you doing? What is this? Your vision doesn't have to look the same because your call isn't the same. Do I believe in call? I believe in education. I, further yourself, learn, grow. But if God is calling you to something, you better be quick to say yes. Whether it's an internship, whether it's a whether it's YWAM, whether it's going out of your way to speak to someone at work, no matter what it is, no matter what area of your life you're in, God has called you outside of the norm because that is what will, is what will affect people around you. And that's the vision that he's placed upon you because you're, you are unique. So you have to stand upon your watch. Just like Caleb and Joshua. Number two, you have to learn to not only see but to understand, the Bible says, God, I pray that they have eyes to see and ears to hear. You see, vision can be attained through prayers. In Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 16, it shows us this amazing vision that was given. And prayers give grace to vision. Watching and understanding gives alertness to direction, direction and vision. When prayers give birth to vision, watchfulness keeps it 
from being forgotten. You have to constantly remember what the Lord has said in times of trial, in times of circumstances, in times of trouble. You have to learn to see past those things and to hear the words of the Lord and the promise over your life. How many of you ever lost a vision or lost hope in your vision like, like Susan was talking about? You lost hope. You're like, I don't understand, God, what you're doing. You told me this. I've been going after it with all my heart, and I don't see it fulfilled. That's more than any time, the time you have to be able to watch and see and remember what God has promised you. Number three is something that I'm learning how to do. You have to write the vision. Physically, move yourself to write something down. A vision not written will soon be forgotten. God wrote down his vision for his creation. He wrote it in the Bible. He showed us. He said, listen, I'm writing all of this stuff down. I'm writing your history so that you can understand your future. He gave us revelation of saying, hey, listen, John, I need you to write these things, and I want you to call it revelation, and I want you to tell them. And they're not all going to understand it, and it's not all going to be easy to comprehend. But this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And when it happens, and when I fulfill it, they'll understand it. In the same way, you have to write down the things that you want. You have to write down the things that God is showing you and the desires that he's placed upon your heart. If God would write, and he understands that it's important to have a, an actual transcript of these things, I feel like it's our call the same way to write things down. It may sound simple. It may sound silly. But I, 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 have, I have things written down all over the place that I just find. Uh, the person who does more than anybody else, Jody, I think you do this more than anybody else. You write everything down. There's sticky notes all over the dash of her car. I got into her car one time. like, what is this? What is this? Like, what are you doing with your life? Like, you have a phone. Like, put it all in here. <laughs> but that's the way God has called you, to write it down. Why? Because if you can write and if you see something, you can attain something. It's fresh. It's right there in front of you. You want a great marriage? Write that down. I want a great marriage. And every day when you look up and you say, I want to be a great husband, you see that and you're like, okay, what can I do right now? I'm going to make breakfast. I'm going to go scoop the driveway. I'm going to do something that shows my spouse how much I love her and care about her. You want to be a great dad? Perfect. Write it down. I want to be a good dad. And then when your daughter is screaming and yelling, do you just go grab that paper and say, I am a good dad. I'm going to be a good dad. I'm going to be a great employee. I'm going to be a great boss. I'm going to be a great whatever. God, this is what you're calling me to. You're calling me to excellence. You're calling me to a higher standard. And I, I know that if I write it down and I see it, I can attain it. What do you want? Maybe you say, I want my, my kids to love Jesus. Okay, write it down. I want my kids to love Jesus. And then you show them every day, hey, this is what I'm going for. I want you to love Jesus. How can I help you? Can we worship together? Can we pray together? Can we do a, a, a simple Bible study for five minutes today together? Let's eat together. Hey, get up. Let's go to church. See, when you write it down, it becomes attainable. You have to learn to run with the vision. Number four, you have to run. Activi activities of your vision must become a daily routine. How many of you know that there are habits of successful people? When it comes to, when it comes to spiritual Christianity, there are habits that people who are successful have in their lives. The Bible says in Acts that they gave themselves to daily eating together, praying, and worshiping, right? There are habits that, that form in your life that cause you to be successful in the destiny that God has called you to. It should be what you live for. Vision plus action becomes realization. If you understand where God is taking you, what God has for you, and you move on, uh, towards that thing, then it becomes a realization. It becomes a reality in your life. It doesn't become some super spiritual thing or some vision or something out here, clear out here that's not attainable. You see, when you, you place your action in the fruits of your labor and, and what God has given you, if you put, place those things and you plant those things within the vision that God has for you, then you begin to see amazing fruit within your life. And you say, well, I've never seen fruit within my life. Well, where is your vision and your action not corresponding? What has God told you? What has God called you to? Are your actions directly reflecting what he's told you? Just like I said this morning, do you believe? Because if you believe, 
and I see a sick person or I see someone struggling or hurting or breaking, I be, if I believe that God is who he says he is and that he's really good, that I should be moved on his behalf to reach that need. Why? Because he loves that person way more than I love that person. But too many times we're taken back and we're not, we're, we believe that God is good, so we'll just say, okay, God, I need you to touch that person over there. And if I see you touching them, maybe I'll move. No, God's waiting for you to go do something, to go be who he's called you to be because he's given you this direction. He's given you this vision. He's planted it in your heart. But it requires action. You need to run with the vision. And number five, and lastly, this is, this is a hard one, is you have to get the right timing. I mean, no timing is everything. There, a quote that says, a timeless vision is an unaccomplishable, unaccomplishable vision. When the timing of the vision is missed, frustration sets in. I have been frustrated in my life with promises that I've had from God. I'll just be very honest with you. I have been frustrated before saying, God, this is what you said. Why didn't you fulfill this? Why didn't you pour this out? God, you told me to go pray for this person, and they didn't get healed. What in the heck? You see, God's timing is perfect. He, he plants seasons in our hearts, and he plants all these other things, these visions and all these things in our hearts, but we live out, he lives outside of time. I mean, you know, God is outside of time. There is no, there's no time within eternity. He lives outside of time, and time was given to us, and oftentimes we don't understand, and God reveals something to us, and we're like, okay, oh, God said this. He said he's going to bless my family. Okay, God, I want it right now. Let's do it. But we forget that there's a process and a journey that we have to go on that he's calling us to of growth and maturity so that when the blessing comes, we're able to bear it well. We'll be able to hold it well. I have no doubt that there's people in here that are sitting out here that God has called you into full-time ministry without any shadow of a doubt in my life. The question is, God, what are you doing right now to prepare that person for what's to come? God, how can I encourage that person, you, you right now, right where you're at, with the vision that God has placed in your life, how can, how can we encourage each other to get you to the place of fulfillment of the vision? And oftentimes, it's so, we get so caught up and we get lost and we get the wrong lenses. In the middle of our journey, we take a wrong turn. Because we're not seeing it the way we, we, we thought we would see it or we're not feeling it the way we thought we'd feel it. And it's not all good all the time, but he is good all the time. And if we can remember that, then we can have the right lenses to see the vision that God has placed in our life fulfilled. My heart and my life is I don't want to be a man walking through this world blindly. I want to be someone who continually has personal vision. I want to understand, God, what are you doing in my heart and my life? Where are you taking me and where are you calling me to? And then I want to run with it. I want to continually remember. I want to watch. I want to be a person of action. And when the time comes and that, that intersection of opportunity and vision, when, when those things meet, I want to be a person of action that makes those things reality in my life. What does all this mean for us today as a church? What is the one thing that God has prepared us for? What is our season? What is our time? What is the vision that we're going towards? Because we always have to continue to chase after the vision. If you don't have a vision for your life, I want to encourage you. Pray. God will give you one. He will give you one. Open his word. He will give you one. If you feel like, well, God doesn't talk to me, then you need to read your Bible because he speaks through his word as well. Start there. When you're reading your word and something just comes alive, then it's a great time to say, okay, God, I feel you. Like, what are you saying? And he'll speak to your heart. And when you, have, when you have the ear to hear, just remember in that time to say, hey, God, what do you have for me? He'll begin to tell you. This is what I have for you. You're going to be an amazing man of God. I have blessings for your, you and your family. I have these amazing and wonderful things, and you can hold on to those, and you write them down, and you begin on your journey, and you don't forget those things, and you continually keep those things in front of you. We, as a church, have always been and will continue to strive to be. I don't pretend that we do anything perfect or that we've arrived at anything, but continually in front of our hearts, we are three things. We're people, number one, of his presence. We want to follow him. We want to follow his spirit because he's a good leader. 
in our services. We want him to move. We want, you know, if, if he doesn't show up, what do we have? I'm not here to entertain you. Our worship team is not here to entertain you. Our worship team is here to help you give yourself to the Father so that he can respond to your heart. So that he can, we can taste and we can see and we can know that he's good. That it's not some religious thing, but it's a relational thing that he wants to come and meet with us. We want to be people of his presence. Secondly, we want to be a people of service. And I feel like, you know, more and more we're doing, we're doing a really good job of serving our community well and being, being present within the lives of people who are hurt and lost and struggling because God said, go ye into all the world, not sit ye in a church. <laughs> he said, go ye into all the world and find people, find the lost, the hurting, the broken, find people who, who need Jesus. And, and oftentimes we see those people as the outcasts, but you know what? There's, there's people who are prominent people within our community that I've been praying for that I really believe that God really wants to touch. It's anyone, it is everyone. It is anyone and it is everyone. And when I have that mindset, I can serve people really well. And lastly, I want to be a family. That's being there for each other, understanding that we care about each other. It doesn't mean you, you know, we're always at each other's, you know, beck and call or, or anything like that. But it means that if you call, I'm going to pray. I'm going to be there. You need help moving? I'm, I will probably show up or I will send Chris. See, that's the only reason we get interns is because you guys keep moving. And so we need interns. We want to be a family. We want to be there for each other. When you come into this place, I want you to feel a sense of, okay, I belong here. This is somewhere where I can belong. So that's always who we're going to be. But specifically for this season, um, and I'm not going to go into this deep today. Next week, I'm going to go into this deep. But I really believe that God has given us a, real, a really good three-part vision for this season. And we're going to start moving with it. And it's this. Dream big, think small, and people matter. So we're always present service family. But for right now, for this season, we're going to dream big. We have to expand our vision. We have to begin to see things on a bigger level. We have to begin to see, think, see the way God sees it. He desires a city to live in revival. We have to dream big. For you personally, you need to dream big. You need to think beyond your own, your own ability to do something. A lot of time we say vision, okay, God, I want to get a promotion at work this year. Well, you can do that. Just show up on time and work really hard. Like be good at your job. Because there's very few people who are really good at their job nowadays. Be good at what you do. Work hard. Be diligent. Be kind to people. Be caring. Be a difference maker. You can do that on your own. What's bigger than that? What is the vision that God has given you that's bigger than that? How do we accomplish that, that, those big dreams? We think small. Like I said earlier, a vision is something that is out there. It's the end goal in mind. But I have to, it, as, just like a marathon runner, they have to take every single step. And every single step matters. One misstep, they can turn their ankle, they can ruin everything. We have to begin to think small. We, we oftentimes believe, okay, God, you have this ultimate calling for me. I just want that right now. And he's saying, listen, I need you to take this step of faith. Because this step of faith is going to prepare you for that. Yes, that's for you. But today is this. Waking up every day and saying, God, Holy Spirit, what do you have for me right now today? Who do you need to touch today? How can I be an impact to my children today? How can I be a better husband today? How can I go to work today and just release your love and your goodness and your kindness? How can I have a conversation today that looks like a conversation that might lead someone to Jesus? What do I need to do right now? You see, the dream is big. The process is step by step. Dream big. Think small. And in everything we do, we understand that people matter. People matter. Not because I'm the most loving and caring person. No, because he loved the world so much that he sent his only son. That whosoever, who is whosoever? Anybody. What exclusions are there within the kingdom of God? They're not. There's just lack of choice. That's the only difference between you and an unbeliever is a choice. That thin line of choice How easy it is it for someone? If Todd's on this side of the line, Todd, come up here real quick. If this is the only thing, it's choice. 
and I'm on this side of the line, I'm a believer, does God love me more than he loves Todd? As a believer, no, he doesn't. What did you say? Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> he doesn't. As a believer, our calling is to dream big, thinking, God, you have a vision, you have something for me. But the small thinking says, what do I need to do right here to take this step to make this come over here? To get past this choice and this, this mountain or whatever it is in his life, this frustration, this circumstance, because he matters in the kingdom of God. And when we see people, not by their attitudes, their actions, not by their sin, but we see people according to his heart, through his blood, then we begin to take the hands of people and bring them over into this choice of, listen, Jesus loves you a whole lot. Will you just accept him and receive him? And then we start this process of discipleship. Why? Because people matter and God has a vision for their life too. And it's important to help people find that vision. We have to dream bigger. We have to dream bigger. As a church, as you as a person, we have to dream bigger. We have to believe that God is good and he loves people in this community so much that he's not willing to let them die. But he's called me here for such a time as this. I have to think small. What can I do right now in order to fulfill that call? What can I do right now? And we have to understand that in everything that we do, it's because he loves us. People matter to him. So people should matter to me. Amen? Next week, we're going to dive into that. We're going to talk about what dreaming looks like. We're going to talk about what thinking and processes look like. How do we attain those things to get those right lenses? And lastly, we're going to talk about the loss. We're going to talk about how people matter. We're going to hear testimonies of his goodness and his love in lives that probably didn't deserve it. Because that's my story. Is that your story? Come on. Let me pray for you today. Father God, I thank you for your goodness and your love. I thank you that you're continually giving us a vision. You're continually calling us to look forward, to plan ahead, Father, to set goals, Father, and to run after them. Father, I pray for strength in this season. For every single person in this place to, to run after the vision you placed for them, Lord God. That they wouldn't just grab on to what we're doing as a church, Father, but they would understand that they are an integral part of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is made up of so many different components. We don't all have to look the same. We don't all have to think the same. But we're all running the same direction. Father God, I thank you that there's churches across this city who have hearts for vision. They, they, they see ahead, Lord God, and they're reaching people really, really well. God, I pray that you would continue to bless them. And Father, for those in this place who have a hard time hearing and understanding that you have a call for them, I pray that as they read your word, Father, that your voice would become so clear to their hearts. That they, they would come alive with a vision. They would come alive with hope. That they would come alive, Father, with this new thing that you're doing inside of them. Holy Spirit, we love you. We would ask that you would continue to lead us and to guide us. And it is in your son's precious and holy name we pray. The name of Jesus which is above every other name, amen, amen. Please be safe as you go. Have a wonderful new year, and I, I encourage you to come back next week, and we're going to talk about what this looks like. Amen.